number figured out A motive born in drought And brevity And if I'm not the soul of your design I blatantly decline Your remedy Don't I'd rather be a dreamer, I'd rather be free, I'd rather be a leader, I'd rather be a queen, I'd rather be a singer in a trashy cover band. I'd rather be a closer, I'd rather be clean, I'd rather be a poser in a magazine, I'd rather be pretty much anything else than your machine. Wasn't always just a single shade A palette full of grey In reverie And I can burn it brighter than the sun I have a coding gun Inside of me Don't box me in Don't or I'll leave I'd rather be a dreamer I'd rather be a dreamer, I'd rather be free, I'd rather be a leader, I'd rather be a queen, I'd rather be a singer in a trashy cover band. I'd rather be a closer, I'd rather be clean, I'd rather be a poser in a magazine, I'd rather be pretty much anything else than your machine. Hello CSC and welcome back to another night of Counter-Strike. Tonight we have the final regular season match for the Challenger tier. Uh, we have Big Slimes, Muck Menaces, and uh, we have Hacker Havens, Tilted Togglers facing off here on Anubis. The last reg season game for Challenger. I My name is Owen. I'm joined here tonight with our very own media head, Fleeb. How are you doing tonight, Aiden? You know, I'm, I'm great. I'm looking forward to this game. You know, like you said, last reg season match of Challenger. That's always, uh, it's always a, bit, a good one to look forward to and be able to get that on stream. 
Especially with all the playoffs yeah. going on. Yeah, for sure. I think it's going to be a really good one. I'm excited to see what we get out of this. Um, I did a little bit of, uh, you know, tier standing updating and everything. And so kind of implications for this game. Both teams are going to make playoffs no matter what. You know, Big Slime's number one in their tier. But uh, it's kind of a big difference for seeding. Uh, Tilt Tilt will be at number eight seed if they win. Or they drop all the way down to number 13 if they lose. So they have a much harder lineup, a much harder matchup in the first round if they do not win here tonight. Yeah, I mean, we're getting... And with that knife round, we're just, we're right into it already, you know. We're going quick. Right into the yeah, it's, round. It's going to be uh, gonna be exciting. I'm a big Anubis enjoyer, so I'm excited to see what we get from both sides tonight. It looks like Big Slime's pistol strat is going to be a little bit of an A-pop, and there is nobody on the a side for the Tilted Togglers. Chili Eater is the closest one on the rotate. He's here over in cams. Drops the HE. He gets no damage on that, but he starts taking damage himself, and on the run, Sage is going to get cross and get the bomb planted. Jeji gets taken out by Crunch over towards CT. We're in a 4v4 post plant here. There are, there are no kits down for the side of Hacker Haven, so they need to make sure that they can get this one done quick. Diabetes from heaven. He only gets the first. Dibes, quick little tap on the USP, gets one. Shroomy It's going to finish off Atlas. Dibes gets a second on a Sage. It's a 1v2 here for Chell's Bells, but Shroomy. Dibes and Shroomy are going to be able to double up, and they're going to close out this pistol round for the for uh, for the Hacker Haven. Going to get a quick 1-0 lead on their CT side of Anubis. Yeah, that was that was quite the retake by them. And if you saw at the beginning there, they were all leaning towards B on the Tilted Toggler side. Like, they had four stacked B, only one leaning towards mid, which made that... A really unfavorable situation for it until the Togglers once Muck Menace has got the bomb down very quickly. But it's a very convincing retake from them. Yeah, I think that uh, I think that round came down to the a few of the Tilted Togglers members just hitting some really nice shots. The trade on the Heaven player from Dives is really strong, not letting him activate too much more. Um, and then uh, the damage that other players had kind of done accumulated, and Shroomy was able to finish off a couple a couple kills as well. So, yeah, it's a good start. I know that this map, as it's developed over the last almost uh, like what eight nine months at this point, we've seen we've seen things balance out a little bit more. I think it's still pretty T sided. So I think mean, getting a pistol on your CT side is all you can really ask for. But they're following up with another quick A hit. Jeji and Atlas, they're on the entry. They're gonna take out Levry, and all the Molotovs are falling in onto the site. Captain Diabetes is gonna hold down the flank. Chili Eater goes down, and this might just be a save right off the bat. They have two rifles they can save here, and they don't have any... Re they have only one set of retake util. Crunch takes a lot of damage, but it's going to be able to finish off Chell's Bells. And a, not a lot more damage is going to go Dibes' way. Diabetes even finishing off the kill. There's nothing left here. Shroomy maybe seeing if he can upgrade his gun from an MP9 to a rifle if someone decides to push him. But yeah, it looks like this is going to be a saved call for the Tilted Toggler, so... I already talked about it, you know, it's good getting your CT pistol because it is very, very hard to shut down some quick sight hits when uh, when the T's start coming at you. Yeah, definitely. Especially with those four spy weapons, you know, it, you know they're gonna they're gonna make that play very fast, and so that's that's like that was the best thing. Especially in the way they got the bomb down two rounds in a row, they were able to force back because of the pistol round bomb plan. You know, that's on a loss on a pistol round, that's really all you can ask for, especially, you know, when you when it gets close like that. Yeah, for sure. And I think that uh, it was interesting because Levry was playing on that platform behind the pillar on the on the early A aggression. And uh, I think it was kind of a, like a tough situation that he wasn't able to get any kills there. I think uh, getting at least one makes that a doable situation, a, a, a doable retake for the Tilted Toggler. So coming up empty handed, Jeji and Atlas just shutting him down immediately really made that difficult. Uh, but we had a force come in back from the Tilted Togglers and... It, look at this. This is honestly a really interesting read from the Muck Menaces. They put all of their marbles towards the B site. They had done so much A aggression the first couple of rounds, and it honestly pulled the Tilted Toggler's attention. And look at that. Early aggression, and the, all the rotates came in. There's one player towards mid who's going to go down. Dives gets taken out, and Lavrai. Oh, he creeps up, but does he know? He saw Chell's on the jump up. The jumping Deagle is not going to be enough to get any damage off, but they at least know where one player is, and they know that there's a lot of mid control. Shroomy, underneath, jump up. He gets the hook first. Uh, the MP9 spray is good for two. Lots of damage back. Diabetes equalizes it, pulls it back to a 3v3, but that's a huge mid-round position from Shroomy. Equalizing this for the CTs on bad weapons, that's all they could really ask for in this situation. One minute left on the clock, and it looks like we are going to creep towards a B exec. Yeah, and you look at the mini map. this ultimately... It, it's, it's a hard call to make, but, you know, it's the closest they are. They had most players stacked this way, but... This is where they were at the beginning of the round. And so they're still, Crunch is still here. He has not moved. 
I think it's a I think it's an interesting play that uh you that uh tilted togglers on such bad weaponry are gonna opt to sp play so spread out. I would have think that they would be stacked either the two pistols on one side together or even all three together to kind of put a stop to this uh this site take, but unfortunately that was not the case. In diabetes, with the gun in his hand, oh he's gonna be able to get the flash off and Lavry makes it interesting. Gets one crunch left on the one v two. No kit here. But he has the A1S, so he has the damage that he needs to do. No kit. He's going to stick for the full 10 seconds. He gets off of it. Tries to see if they're going to peek. Oh, they know he's off of it. And they're just going to play this post plant so perfectly. If they really need to put the pressure on, they're going to push. And lots of damage comes out. But Sage on the MP9 is going to close it. A 3K from Diabetes in the round. Going to put any sort of question to bed. Not going to let any force buy from the Total Togglers come out. And that's going to put them up 2-1 to one lead for, uh, for Big Slime. Yeah, that was a great couple of rounds from uh from the muck menaces here as you have you been able to see they've just been sticking together as a unit with just usually one player in the back as a lurker or has watched their flank or whatever but just this 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 what they've been doing so far just going together it's just been working out very well for them so far yeah and i think it'd be interesting to see how this t side develops because if they're pulling in some fakes like that i think on better weapons i think the tilted togglers are going to be less enticed to just instantly rotate like that yeah so i would be i'd I mean, be curious they're all, to they're pretty much together again here yeah, I think on this USP stack, this is the right play. Just kind of push through, try to get something done. Shells Bell's going to make contact, but he actually dies to the UP, uh, the USP. Uh, and it leaves his team on B site. The bomb is coming late, but Jeji, some nice, crisp, clean headshots on Lovry and Crunch. Going to shut down the USPs and the canals. Shroomy towards CT. Lots of damage on the Atlas. Only two HP left and not able to finish the kill. Chili Eater is getting hunted. Can he get anything? Lots of damage again, but no dice on the kill. Three of one. Muck Menace is going to clean up the US, the USP eco. Uh, it's going to be a quick and clean fourth round for them. Yeah, obviously that was just another, that was just an eco for the togglers, but they got one there. A little bit of damage, but now we're going to see the big, the big guns come out. So this this is the big round right here. This is where you want to see the togglers get back into it. Maybe stop stop the, the Muck Menaces here. Get some momentum right yeah, this is going to be the first gun round. I'm a little concerned because I think that they've been playing more passive on their sites in these early rounds. Um, and so letting the bomb go down and only having one kit on the right scares me a little bit. But I don't think it scares them because two kills through smoke. One from Chili Eater and one from Shroomy. Immediately going to put the advantage in the favor of Tilted Togglers here. And uh, while Dives is low HP, Chells is kind of inching his way up. But is he aware and ready for Dives' position? But with the support... Over from Shroomy. Dives is going to still be able to get one even on low HP. Chili Eater from Canals comes up into E-Box. He's going to get one back on Sage. And that leaves Jeji in a tough 1v4 situation. Bomb is down on B-Site. All the CTs have rotated over. Is he going to hit any shots in this flush? Looks like not. Shroomy. Nice little double kill in this round is going to shut down the T's. And the CTs, once they got on full guns, full, you know, full buy, right back into it. Yeah, I mean, and that was a... The beginning of that round, Chili Eater threw the smoke in mid just right away, and then I believe it was Dives as well threw another smoke, and then Shroomy with the other two kills. Like that was just a very convincing uh, shutdown there from the Tilted Togglers. But like you said, the Muck Menaces they still got the cash, so they're right back in it. Yeah, I think it's definitely a strong way to get your gun rounds back. I think something they can't rely on is getting those kills through smoke. You're not going to be guaranteed those every round. Uh, but I think to at least get some momentum back in your favor to, to do something, I think it's very, very strong. I think it's a, a good kind of mental break for your team to make sure you're not getting the T rounds stacked against you so early on. A big chunky nade towards Crunch. He's going to take all of that. And the bomb on the Muck Menace's side is leaning towards B or towards A site. And they have a lot of map control. Yeah, this is a little bit different. This is more of a default than the last few rounds, like I pointed out, how they've just been moving together. This is a little bit of a pace change, setup mm -hmm. change, but I think it's a little bit necessary after uh, the Tilted Toggler just was able to get them pretty easily last round. But Captain Diabetes, quick pick onto Shroomy there. Yeah, and that Molly, that Molly did not tick on Chells, so they got the kill from Steps, but I don't know if they're aware that Chells is going to be there that quickly. Dive seems to be focused on, focused on, the, on an E-Box walkout. But the, some of this util is coming forward from the A side. Dives gets caught out by Chell's Bells on the A or on the B site. Chili Eater's gonna at least get one back onto Jeji in mid, and Crunch with a banging headshot out of his AK that he's that he's been able to pick up. Gonna take out Chell's Bells. Atlas. He's gonna be able to spot Levine towards the edge of the wall, but he doesn't get it done. 
It's a 2v2 now. Captain Diabetes has kind of been able to activate with his op. He's holding the canal's flank, but there is no flank coming in. Lavrai left the A site and he's coming through Palace. Crunch and Lavrai both low HP. Captain Diabetes doesn't matter the HP. He's going to put his op to use Sage on this default position and he's going to put a stop to Crunch. No clutch for the Tilted Togglers. Muck Menaces are going to take one back for two lead. Yeah, that was a that was a, a pretty solid play from the Muck Menaces. You saw Shells Bells that Molly did not take him, which allowed him to get into uh, into Z there a little bit quicker than before. Once he got that opening, they just they changed it up on a on a on a you know flick of a switch. They were over. They had the bomb towards A, but it was just they took it right over to B. Got the plant down after that opening. Made it for a, a nice bomb plant for them. Yeah, I think it was interesting the pace change to change over to a default rather than a stacked. Uh, you know, exec towards one side of the map. I really like that out of the Muck Menaces. I agree. It they shows did it a... very well as well. Oh my god, look at the bridge drop towards Canals. And they actually get the kill on it. Chells, the A defaulter is going to go down. And they don't see anybody here. That AK is going to get dropped. Die, a Shruby is going to pass it over to Lavraya, it looks like. Or keep him himself. Dibes does go down in Canals. Uh, or by Ebox, excuse me. But Shroomy, does he know? He has no idea about Jeji. His advanced position to make sure that AK doesn't get her out. And he's gonna put a stop to it. Sage, a nice headshot on Lavrai, and a nice second headshot onto Crunch. And unfortunately, what started with an opening pick for the Tilted Togglers has turned sour on this on this eco. Jeji's gonna get a second for himself in this round, and fifth round for the T's coming in. Yep. I mean, that was just a that was a classic eco, but that was a, that was a a good play there from the from the Tilted Togglers. You know, there was potential there, but the cleanup was just very clean from the Muck Menaces. Getting two on that, uh, on like a pistol uh, buy like that is definitely like all you really can ask for at the end of the day. I think expecting more is is always a tough ask. So, you know, you take your two kills, won't hurt the economy a ton. They're gonna have to rebuy the op, which is good. But other than that, you know, it's not gonna be uh, not gonna be anything big. And they didn't even bo uh, bother to grab the op. And oh my god, that opening tap from Jeji, he's gonna put some damage on a Levi and finish it himself. The open the ex the ad aggressive position from the op. Oh, Crunch. He's going to come back from heaven, and he's going to peek from half wall and get two. Chili Eater gets a third. Mug Menace is in the 3v, the 3v4 turned 2v3. Dives is an aggressive position on this. Canals in Sage isn't ready for it. Now Captain Diabetes with the bomb and the op up towards Rugs. He's left in the 1v3 to clutch. Yeah, it was, was interesting. Uh, they had, they had a double op set up, and they had they had one on the mid rotate and one up close on A. Like that is very interesting to play to see. That damage could spell disaster for diabetes, <laughs> and it <laughs> does. Sure does yeah. Big nade from Shroomy, and uh, that was a a tough one. They had the the pace on that push there from the menaces was was it was it was a good pace, but it just seemed like they got blocked up by something. Getting into getting out of A main after they get the initial initial kill, which allowed Crunch. They just walked him in the op one by one. He gets two, and it was just it was just rough at that point. Yeah, I don't think they were expecting a second op. They saw the first one in A main, and Crunch I think was playing from mid, and so he was instantly rotated to heaven on that contact. And uh, they didn't have the heaven smoke to put a stop to it. I think they just thought that with the extended with the aggressive pace, you know, shut down the op. If there's a rifler, they can just out duel it. But they weren't able to do so, and that that just led to a uh, led to the round win going to the favor of Tilted Togglers. We do see we do see an opening kill out of Jeji on the Deagle, a headshot into Crunch. So that is something, but uh, it is going to let Jeji get the off. And he's trying to get back with it. Oh, and the body block from his teammate actually gets him killed. Chili Eater sees all three in mid. He gets a nice little 3k. Drops the bomb and drops the op. Doesn't let them run away with it at all. Oh my god, this timing for this Atlas. Timing. Oh my god, how did he get behind Shroomy? It's going to get one back. Muck Menaces are going to get gonna get one kill. So it makes it a, or a second kill, actually, to make it a 2v3 here. Um, they oh had my god. That... Open too, but just no bomb. Dives does shut down the Chell's Bell's A lurk. And so if Atlas is to give him, give any interest into this round, it's going to start with mid. That's where the bomb is dropped. It's where Lavrai is sitting. Chili Eater is close by, and Dives is holding a B push. It uh, looks like there's 40 seconds left, so I wonder if Atlas is going to try to go a different route or if he's just going to save the gun. This is definitely just a good save. Especially because they have mid on lockdown with that bomb, but, you know, you never know. Looks like he's opting for a save, though. 
All right, 20 seconds left. He's just hanging out towards B. I think he's just trying to secure this weapon, make sure it doesn't get stolen. It is uh, definitely like... Uh, I'm, I'm curious to see what what we're going to do, what the CTs are going to do with their op more. Because I'm, I'm excited to see if they're going to go for aggressive plays like they did in that first uh, that first like big gun round. They had the op towards A, obviously. Jeji had a nice opening and just shut it down so it couldn't get anything done. But I'm curious to see if they're going to try to get some openings with the op. Maybe have a B push where he sits behind a smoke to to try to peek out and get something. Maybe they're going to do something with, uh, you know, a mid put, like, you know, getting themselves mid, maybe in an aggressive smoke so they can peek towards canals with it from bridge. Um, I want to see what the op does, because I think that a lot of maps, the CT op has impact. I think CT op on Anubis has some of the most impact on any CT side in the game right now. It just, it really can turn the tide of a round when a lot of times the CTs are just always in disadvantage. Yeah, it's definitely a very good point. And I think I agree with you there when you said uh, their aggression was, was, uh, was what helped them win that last big gut round. But I think if they can just get to the positions that the Muck Menaces are pushing up so fast on and get those initial picks, it just kind of shuts them down at the very beginning of the round, it makes it hard for them to move from there. I would agree. I think if we're, uh, I think if they're able to sort of, uh, sort of predict where they, uh, you know, where they're coming from, and if they're able to set up a stack or have just enough bodies to really stop an aggressive push, I think it's going to be really hard for, uh, for the Muck Menaces to kind of string together rounds. Yeah, I definitely agree with, with the fast, the fast pace they've been taking. There's that opening headshot through the smoke from Chili Eater. I know you said I said you couldn't rely on that at every round, but uh, he's, doing he's doing plenty doing of damage. damage, plenty of damage. And I think that Molly was actually missed from Shade. I don't think it's gonna hit where he wanted it to, deep towards doors. Yeah. I'm gonna dump all of his utility. He's gonna fall back. Probably go and grab the bomb. Lavrai actually getting into a little bit of a skirmish with Atlas. This Molotov, it's gonna be enough to to finish him off. Yeah. Actually going to pull a pretty aggressive rotate from the Tilted Togglers, where they're searching towards Canal now, and they also pulled two towards uh, towards the A site. Crunch does get one on the op. Uh, it looked like Chell's Bells peaked as Crunch was towards Z, but uh, the, the T's are really split here. I think the CT's have such strong positioning. Chili Eater going to get a second in the round, shuts down Atlas towards uh, A main, and really that leaves Diabetes and B main, who goes down, and now it's Sage with a bomb in mid. Does get a nice clean headshot towards Dives. Oh, wow. Tries to fake the drop with the pistol and doesn't, you know, not the fake flash gonna work. And Crunch on the op is uh, got, getting activated in these rounds. And that's exactly what I was talking about. He moved towards, uh, you know, towards canals. He wasn't towards A or anything. And I, I, that's the kind of play I was talking about with the CT op. I think that that mid, ki that mid round kill on Shells, who's a really strong lurk for the Mugmentuses, shutting down Shells early is a really big, really big deal for the CTs here. Yeah, and it was just that, that in yeah, like the prediction, if, if the Tilted Togglers can just make a, a, a good prediction on where the Muck Masters are going to be leaning, it's just, uh, if they can shut them down, and they're going to oh. be just another stack here towards B. Oh my god, a quick pistol play, and they're boosted on default, but they're going to give up the, the boost. Shroomy only gets one, dies, he's going to get a second. He drops Jeji and Captain Diabetes, he gonna, and he does go down to Atlas. Lots of damage, but not the kill. Sage doesn't actually grab a second gun. Chili Eater is going to put down Atlas through the smoke, and he's going to put down Sage, and... Two guns go down. Uh, I think that's pretty expected here. Going to get maybe two out of your T side quick little push. So got some damage. Make them have to rebuy. But that op is still being saved. So I think that's kind of their gem right now is keeping that thing alive. Yeah, and they get the, and they get the bomb down. So they got some cash now. So that's the best they could do. Yeah, and I think that this round, uh, this, uh, like, you know, what we've seen so far, Tilted Togglers, they were down... Uh, you know, down one to three, got a round back, lost one, and got a couple back, traded some rounds, and now they've pulled back the last three. So I know two of them weren't the best buys or, you know, weren't amazing, but taking the lead back on CT side is a big deal, I think. Yeah, and, and, and yeah, I think, oh, and we're going to see another, the same, the same boost again. Might same boost and the same B push. Dives is going to actually get it back through the smoke against Jeji, and he sits in the smoke, but Atlas He's knows, surrounded. oh my god. But that's so much damage, but he doesn't get killed! Dives still gets a second! Unfortunately, Chili Eater walks through and dies to Atlas, but... He bought a lot dives... of time there, though, just being alive. Being the bomb is just now side. being planted. I think that extra kill and that time wasted actually made this possible. Because the rotate from Lorvai is coming in. He's going to drop the first. Oh my god, and Chell swings into it! He sees the third on the site. He knows it's an op now. Crunch retaking towards Long. 
Oh, they know where Diabetes is, but Crunch, he, he's trying to mess around. He's trying to buy time for, for Levry to activate. And a miss shot from Captain Diabetes is going to let Levry triple up in the post-plant retake. Keeping the dream and the lead alive for the Tilted Togglers. 7-5 to five now. That's a that's a huge round to win. To shut down kind of a bread and butter B rush like that on Anubis, like that is that is really hard to come back from as a T. Yeah, definitely. And definitely MVP to dives on that round. Somehow staying alive in the smoke. And once it fades, he gets one on the initial push and he gets one more after the smoke fades and he's still in it. That that bottom another 15 seconds before the bomb even went down, and then just Levry. Huge individual heroics there at the end. I think that that lineup from Chels is just so unfortunate. I mean, LeBride didn't even know he was there, and he just kept holding down the trigger as soon as he he peeked him. But the bomb plant does actually mean we're going to get another buy out of the Muck Menaces with that loss bonus and that bomb plant. Um, and it's actually enough to get Diabetes on the op with some Kevlar no helmet. And Levry gives up that early opening pick. And right now that rotate is just Chili Eater. But it's pulling Crunch away from B site. They still have three players towards B. Th that entry kill and the two pushing onto site. Atlas is going to get a second in the round. Just buying more time. Lots of da damage onto dives. Chell's Bells goes down, however. Atlas is left on the A site. In this rotate, oh my god, it's pulled so much. The only one that's close is Shroomy. But there's no bomb plate. Crunch has actually figured it out. Shroomy, he gets one and he stops the cross. Bomb is going to be able to cross, but that HG might do some damage. Ooh. Diabetes takes a lot. 36 damage. He's on 60. A missed op shot from Crunch, but this is a 3v3 retake. Dives... Oh, he should know about Atlas. Yeah, but look at Atlas. Atlas is still just being a pain and for dives because he's just still over on the end. Oh, look at Crunch. He knows they had the call out. Oh, my God. Yeah. He got found out. Oh, peeks out just too far. Crunch goes down to Diabetes. 2v2 post plant here. Shroomy doesn't know about the player in jail. Sage goes against Shroomy, takes him out, and Diabetes with the second op shot to close out the round for Muck Menaces. Dives is going to fall, and that's going to be a round back for the Muck Menaces. That was a yeah, that was a crazy one. I mean, uh, obviously Atlas getting onto onto the A site and causing a lot of problems, pulling an early rotate and then even keeping dives around after the bomb planted. But then uh, it was hard to tell where that round was going to go, especially once Atlas was moving up through Palace and dives was behind him at that point. I could not tell what was going to happen. Yeah, honestly, I thought that crunch uh, getting that kill on the flank was going to be the round ender. I thought that that was enough to like kind of finalize what they wanted to do, but it d wasn't enough. An early push dives, takes out Jeji, and they've established there's nothing B. So that means that this rotate towards the A site can stay. They can keep the stack going because they locked him in. Dives fell back to hold down towards some canal control. But Shroomy pushed all the way through B. Crunch is going to take out Atlas. They're going to go down, and they're just dumping Util on the site, but no one's coming behind it. Yeah, and they know there's there can be a flank here. So honestly, that slowdown is, is, is uh, making it very hard for them because they, they need that pace here. Dibes might be playing with fire with this push. I really liked it when he sat back and waited. I don't know if I like this push. Because I don't know if he knows. They might see his gun barrel. I don't know if Sage sees his gun barrel or not. It looks like he does. Yeah, he Dibes is going to go down. And this kind of makes it awkward. They're ready for the bridge peak. And it does come through. Shroomy gets spotted. But some missed shots from Sage. And they're just going to book it over to the B side. He has the bomb. And Levry is going to stop Diabetes. So that that late age lurk doesn't, oh. isn't able to activate. And this just became much more doable for the Mugmenaces. They found their opening. And, and they, they uh, capitalized on it. What a kill from Sage. That is a big one. Takes a lot of damage, but still getting the kill there is huge. Shroomy spots him and calls him onto default. Levry, one bullet's all he needs and he gets it. Shroomy goes down, but dinks Chells. That 10 HP might be the round difference. It's one bullet for Levry right now. He just needs to spot Chells, but I don't know if he knows where he's went, and he doesn't. Chells with a 1v1 clutch. Or we make it a 1v2. He's, he's going to yeah. do it himself, and... That's a big round win for him. I know he's kind of uh, struggled so far this game. Hasn't been able to find his activation points, been able to find his impact. But that's some that's some late round impact you need from a player like Chels. Yeah, definitely. And personally, I thought that round was over when when uh, their push got shut down at the at the A main. I thought it was over after they were now on the flank and they were just kind of trapped in that part of the map. But picking off dives in water and then they find their opening on B and then huge heroics from shells at the, at the end. That was just a very, very way, good way to win that back. Oh my God. And the B push. Oh my God. Dives and Shroomy. They clean up and get three. Sage finally trades it out and drops dives, but that is not what you expect when you're a T. What a push from those two. Just a couple flashes, a five, seven and a 
<laughs> MP9 is enough to completely put a stop to any B presence from the T's. Oh my yeah. god, what an early round. And the damage from Dives it speaks later. Chili Eater is able to finish him off with a Deagle. Chell's left in a 1v4 oh. and he can't do it. Dang, I think what a final wow. round. I, I, the Tilted Togglers, they've definitely realized how much the Muck Menaces love just running at B in a group. And I think they were just not expecting all those people to be to swing out of B main there. That was that was definitely a really really nice call from the from the Tilted Togglers to make that read. Um, I think especially when you're low money on that final round and you just have to do something. I think that is the right play. Then just kind of stacking, yeah, waiting to play. see what they go into. Like that was very really well, very well read. Bring the fight to them. That's exactly what you want to see. So. Obviously, we see the Tilted Togglers getting a winning CT half. An 8-7 half for them is good. I want to see if we see that same sort of pattern. Muck Menace is having a strong CT. Maybe they get their pistol. Or uh, if, if 8 rounds from the CTs is enough for the Tilted Togglers to run away with this game. Yeah, we will see. Uh, I'm not too sure. I'll admit, though, this, this could be a... Very, oh, we're already seeing quick, and, quick fights here. Oh my god, that flash... It's enough to drop two of them. They split. There's a lot of damage on the Levi, but I, oh, I don't so even know if that matters. They just have the A site. Chell's pushed all the way through. He's going to get one back onto Shroomy. He does some damage to Dives, but doesn't get the kill. And Chili Eater's playing close. I don't know if Chell's is going to clear this. Oh, but Chili Eater actually swings early. And Atlas going to take out him and Dives. This is such a close round, and it just got closer. Crunch in the 1v2. He gets Jeji. Oh, they still think he's towards Z towards cams. I don't think they've realized. No kit onto Chels. Crunch gets him off of the bomb. He's going to stick no, it. Chels has a kit. Oh, no, he does no kit. Sorry. He doesn't. That's the icon. <laughs> <laughs> he's just tapping it. But is this reposition enough? Crunch, he he's bought enough time. I there's, no, no, there's no time to stick this bomb. This is the round over. This is a pistol round for the Tilted Togglers. Call it a 9-7 to seven score line. A nice little 1v2, a 3k out of the round from Crunch, he and he's going to escape with his USP and armor. That's a, that, is a, that is a very, very good pistol run for the Tilted Togglers. Yeah, and if you think back to the, the first pistol round of the other half, it almost went the exact same way. Pretty much. Except it I think was it ended very in a, close. In a 2v1 yeah. last, I think the CTs had two players alive. Yeah, I think the... Pretty much the same thing. Yeah, the CT retake on this uh, on this A site is looked better than I was expecting it to on a pistol round, and honestly, uh, I think it's uh, it really means a lot when uh, when you're able to kind of keep that momentum from your CT side on the last round and winning the pistol. I think that's a huge deal, and uh, it does actually look like against what the meta normally sees right now is CTs forcing, especially when you get into a one v one in a post plant, you almost always see a CT force. So they've opted for the eco. They're waiting for a next round to buy, so they're gonna forfeit double digits more than likely to the Tilted to Togglers, assuming they don't run into the stack. Yeah, there is investing for those big guns as fast as possible. Oh, but Jeji on the close left angle. Will Dives clear this? Could be deadly crossfire here with Atlas and, and Jeji here. This is extremely dangerous for Dives. But we'll see if Dives gets, uh, gets greedy enough to, to step out here. I'm not too sure. It seems like he's aware that one could be Jail and maybe one closer to him, but it is definitely a very risky play to... Definitely a very risky play to sort of wait it out and try to push in. And he actually does clear it. He's going to drop the first and the second with the help of Chili Eater. Jeji and Atlas are going to get eliminated. Captain Diabetes in the little dark rat spot. He's only going to get the one on a Larvae. And some damage on a Chili Eater, but not enough for the kill. Chels gives away his position on the USP. Getting pushed and Shroomy puts it into the round. Ten double digits for the Tilted Togglers here. Yeah, uh, that was a really good round from them. You know, a lot of a lot of players may just run into B side there, no, assuming that the the CTs are on a save. But as you saw there, Dives was patient. He waited for his team to to throw those smokes and get the, the, the get the exec ready for the B side, and then they moved in together, which made that play a lot less dangerous and a lot easier for for Dives to to really uh, make his play there. Yeah, I'm looking to see what we get from the Tutu Togglers because I want to see if they're going to follow a more defaulty style than what the uh, Monk Menaces did. They seem to have a lot of just group pushes towards sites, but I want to see if this is going to be a similar T side or very different. And it look right off the bat, we're definitely seeing an early defaulting style that we did not see at all with uh, with the Monk Menaces. Yeah, for sure. 
and especially the early mid control here was was a uh, was not something that was super prominent for the muck menaces unless they were just pushing up mid. Looks like Dives is gonna offload some of his utility so his team can throw it out for him, get him some more map control, some early flashes and everything. Shroomy gonna get some early aggression. Diabetes in the spot towards door. He gets cleared. Some damage done, and the spam from both teams comes through. And Dives is gonna get the trade. Diabetes goes down a four v four, but mid control is forfeited. This canal's push from Atlas could be interesting, and that spray from Dibes is a little bit more interesting as he misses. <laughs> Sage is going to take that one. Atlas is going to put a stop to any funny business as well. Jeji's going to put the nail in the coffin onto Jeji out towards A, or uh, B main, excuse me, and it's going to leave Crunch in a 1v4 with 35 seconds left on the clock. He what do you think he's going to do here? I don't know. I, save is obviously the smart play, but he's got the bomb, and that's always something to to, be, to take note of. I think the save is actually a really interesting option here because he has enough to do, to drop a gun, drop an AK over to Dibes, uh, you know, fully. He has twenty eight hundred right now. No loss bonus from save, as long as he doesn't give up his gun and die, which he gave away his position, so they know. Nah, yeah, they're gonna be. They're they're, they're converging on this. Slowly, yeah. So there's, he's got about 10 more seconds of this freeze time before this freeze time happens. So if he pushes out, he's going to get taken out from Atlas, but it looks like he's oh, just holding yeah. an angle. He's going to secure this AK. So 3,100, he can buy himself another smoke and drop an AK over to someone like Dibes, and then Lavry could go for the MAC-10, and they could buy into this with a Galil or an AK on Chili and a, an AK on Shroomy. So yeah, I'm hoping they buy into this. Going to do. Yeah, they're going to take the tack here to think about this because... This is they they can buy into this like you like you said so probably just yeah think about it for a second. I think it's a good thing to call attack here. They have four attacks. They're up ten to eight on their T side. They have a moment to kind of breathe. Just just figure out what they want to do. I think right now you only have one bonus. You can full save into the next and guarantee a buy. Um, if Crunch just hero AKs, you play a little bit with some util, try to get some some get a plant down. You're guaranteed you're gonna have enough money for the yeah. next round. Looks and like it does actually look like that's what they're gonna do. Some tech nines were dropped from Shroomy. It looks like that's what he's doing, dropping tech nines and buying some util. They're gonna take a full save. I think that's another good option. I think you can force up, maybe take some weaker guns, try to keep the momentum, or you can save maybe your healer AK or tech nines, get something done. But if not, it's not a big deal. So mm -hmm. I, I feel like we're most likely gonna see some sort of stack here. Looks like it may be the case. And It'll it looks like towards A, very fast. Oh, but there's actually two towards A already. Yeah, the likes of Chell's bells and Captain Diabetes are close. They're just sprinting through this molly. Chell's can't get one with the spray is too weak and dives gets on the Captain Diabetes as well. Oh Sage from Kansas is gonna drop Chili Eater to at least get one back, but this fast play from the Tech Nines is gonna result in at bare minimum a bomb plant and two kills. What an explosion yeah. out of the bomb site. This is definitely already more than they wanted from this round. The bomb plant is, is the absolute biggest thing here. The muck menaces are going to be able to win the retake, but that that was almost devastating for the muck menaces. I think giving up two guns there is really a really tough look, honestly, because it's not like they really established their economy yet. Um, they have enough on Jeji where he can drop one over, maybe a second one if he forgoes some util. Uh, diabetes has enough to get the op in, even if he wants to do that. Um, but I just, it, it's crippling the economy. If they do decide to buy in the op, then they have less money for rifles in the future. Um, and I, I think two kills on an eco like that is everything you could ask for. They get everything they want. They get the op out, a lot of utility between the entire team. Everyone has an AK. I think that's the best case scenario from that round. 100%. That was, yeah, that was just the fast play. Caught him off guard. Still got the util in their hands. Not expecting that. Especially not expecting the Molly's phase, but yeah. <laughs> We're going to see an early default. I, I love seeing Anubis defaults, especially when it results on an opening pick like that. Love Rye on the op. He's going to go towards A main, takes out Chell's Bells. And this, this is huge, actually. The flashes and some extra util being tossed, it pulled over Diabetes and Sage. Diabetes is at the op in heaven. So if Lavry is ready for it, and he is, a nice shot. He's going to get the, the second one, and Lavry goes down to Sage, but a quick trade from Crunch. And look at this timing. They're just walking into an open B site. But I think they're oh, opting they're to call the save. They, they, they want to save, but they're walking back into the action. They had no idea. <laughs> Shroomy and Dives, they're going to close out the round. I absolutely adore that play from the Tilted Togglers. That was beautiful.
the last two players around the Mug Menaces, they had no idea. They were so silent. The photographers were so silent in their B walk-up. There was no way they had any idea they were there. They just walked back into a trap, essentially. Plus the bomb plant. I think that that is, that is a crazy round. I, I, I wasn't expecting the uh, Muck Menaces to run back to B to save. I thought maybe they would see if they can play play an exit, maybe. You can get one or two kills. You can make the retake happen. But I think it spelled, you know, it was even worse for them. And we're seeing what we saw from uh, from the Tilted Togglers. But coming out of A rather than from B site where they have everyone pushing out. That's right. And Chels gets an early kill onto Shroomy. He's going to... Really early map control, too. Shells, especially, he's got water all to himself. Yeah, Canals, he's able to call that no one's here, and with the help of Atlas, who's over towards E-Box as well and B, they know no one's here. It, it, it's surprising that the Tilted Togglers, even though all this early aggression comes through, they still want to try to pull some A, A map control. They have dives lurking, but they have the rest of the team just posted over outside of Canals. Yeah, yes, yeah. I mean, this may still be a little bit unexpected. I mean, I would... I would think they may think they're up mid at this point after leaving through the staircase because, you know, Chell saw that exit. I actually they, think they that this one, I actually think that this is huge. It pulled the Canals players off to where they have two players focused towards B and one player at the best close to mid. Jeji's the only other player close by. So I actually like this reposition. And now show some A presence, pull a little rotate. And while Atlas does get dives towards A, Chili Eater doubles up with two headshots on Z. He, he just opened up the B bomb site on his own, and all that are left is a deal and a P250. They're not able to scavenge any guns. There's just a 3v2 post plant, plenty of guns to go around. Uh, yet again, just the, the mental gymnastics that the, to the togglers are pulling the Muck Menaces through is just insane. And Chili, he's going to get a third for himself in this round. He's eaten nice tonight. A three-round lead, 12-9 scoreline for the Tilted Togglers. Yeah, that, that that was that was pretty crazy, honestly. After they had been forced out of canals by shells, personally, I would have expect them to go back up towards mid, but they just they just waited outside staircase, back outside canals. I mean, and and then once shells had moved up back to to uh, Z, they just took it all back for themselves. And then Chili Eater, obviously, with the wonderful entry. I think this is definitely going to be... I, I think this the round after this one, the next gun round for the Muck Menaces, is, is going to be dire. They really need that round to stay competitive here. Right now, they're down by three. That boost in Canals actually gets two, gets one. A lot of damage back onto Atlas and Jeji, but... The, I mean, the P250 gets one at least. Yeah, I mean, and they're still... They're still just back in their spawnish area. I am curious to see like what this uh what the next um gun round for the Mugmanis is gonna look like because so far they're rotating just too early, getting picked apart in a default, and they're not really getting anything started. And I think that they tr maybe are gonna try some aggression that got them a little bit of early map control last time. But I'm I'm a little worried of them doing something like that because I don't know if they can really match the prowess that the Tilted Togglers had with this. Sh they're aware of the player on plat. Shroomy, miss spray. Sage is going to get one with the P250. It buys enough time where they can let Diabetes sit towards the site. Crunch, a nice headshot out of him. Going to put that uh, to an end. 3v2. These are the two Canals players from earlier who both tied down to 25. Just not enough HP to make this round doable. Yeah, unfortunate for them. I do think headshots with the P250 at this HP is deadly if he hits them, but so far, just some damage on the Levi, but not gonna get a kill. Crunch, gonna get himself a 3K in this round. And yeah, we have a 13 round lead, a 13 round for the Tilted Togglers. And I honestly think this is gonna be a huge round. I, I, I think it's a huge round because if the Muck Menaces lose this round, they either force back immediately on a pretty a pretty decent bonus, loss bonus. They can get some MP9s and stuff, but they force back immediately to try to go and contest for to win in regulation or they give up that that 14th or you know they lose that 14th or they give up the 15th to try to play for overtime and playing for overtime when you're down by six it's doable don't get me wrong it's doable but it is not easy yeah absolutely and, and this is another not as big of a default more of a, oh my a god early mid control back to the smoke you hate to see it if you're the muck menaces 
Yeah, I mean, they are hacker haven after all, and it really does seem a little suspicious the amount of smoke kills they've got in this game. I guess Richard it's just... Richard that, that, is just walling right there. I mean, he almost got uh, that. I mean, hey, hey, man, you never know. I think it is just the nature of Anubis. In a default early towards mid, you're going to exchange a lot of uh, utility and ammo between the between the smokes, and I think it's just unfortunate that the Tilted Togglers have been on the receiving end of, like, you know, they've been on the winning side of that every single time. Yeah. Oh my god, this position from Chels. Oh, and it actually pays off. He's going to get two. That early mid push is just done. Yeah, that a huge play from Chels, and that's just mid lock. I think we do look at the scoreboard and see all the kills everyone has on both sides. Chels has just been having a really tough game. He's really been struggling. I think that a round like this, if they're able to win this round and close it, him getting the two kills in mid there to, to kind of kickstart the round in their favor, I, I think that's going to be what he needs to get himself back into this game. Yeah, I think he's going to be really enjoying that play. That Ooh. Very, very nice shooting from Jeji. Huge 3k from Jeji just stops him as they walk into the bomb site. He got a wall bang. I think the first one was a, like a dink through a teammate. And he just finished Levi because he's already damaged. Or maybe it was on Chili Eater. Either one. It's, it's, a, it's a good round to close for McMenaces. Gets them to double digits, and it buys them some time. We do have another safe and good buy from the Tilted Togglers, so it's not all fine and dandy yet, but this does think, make things a little bit closer for the McMenaces. They want to stay as competitive as they can right now. Yeah, I think that one was definitely also helpful for the mental game as well. Always a big, important factor. It does look like this is such like an interesting like setup from the Muk Menaces, honestly. They play two towards mid and then early they throw their util, don't see anything and just leave it. They just give it up and play super far back and play super passive and they play two towards A. I just think it's really interesting when I mean last round they had two go go towards mid. I mean the the tilted togglers every round have shown that they're capable of taking mid control. So I can understand giving it up if they're they're losing it, but it's not even where the rounding moments are coming from on the Tilted Toggler, so I'm surprised they're not trying to get, keep some sort of mid control at all. Yeah, but it's also really smart how they're, on these defaults, they're spreading out, but they're staying grouped together. You know, there's two. Where they oh! go, groups in it. What a shot from Crunch. But they just move in groups together for these, for these easy trades if something goes wrong or, you know, someone mm -hmm. dies. Yeah, I think this is very, very, very... Great Counter Strike being played by the Tilted Togglers right now. I think this round could really go either way. Maybe not so much anymore. Chili Eater. Oh, oh a nice headshot onto Atlas. And no matter what, he just opened up the A bomb site to himself. Diabetes is the op on A. So he's just going to get the skill into Shroomy walking into him. But this is going to be a save. Dives is clearing everything, making sure they have a safe plant on B. They know it's B site for themselves. They're, they're not going to give it up. And we're going to have to see a save from the Luck Menaces. Yeah, and that was just uh, that was just chili eater. You know, how do you how do you stop that? How do you stop that? He just a uh, crazy shot, crazy one eighty. Yeah, the quick adjustment. I'm seeing on the replay really quick, but that's that quick adjustment is that is disgustingly strong. That is really clean. And they found yeah, some. They, they did find where they're saving. I, I think that if. If honestly, I don't think Tilted Toggers have enough money where they should be running in just guns blazing trying to get these kills. I think if they can get them, that's good. But I don't think they should. If they lose two players without getting anything, then I think they should calm down. Now, Dives is going to take out with the rifle, and Captain Diabetes does get two back, and Chili Eater goes down as well. So it's kind of what I was worried about. They have enough. They, they have enough money to to get their guns back from for Tilted Togglers, but. They're gonna be late on util or have to buy Galils. I, I think if they got, I think if Diabetes gets that second one, Chili Eater just waits, sees what happens. But and this is this this is a good tech timeout for Muck Menaces. This is a really tough spot. Their money isn't great. If they buy here, they can contest for overtime. If they or they can contest for regulation and winning sixteen fourteen. If they if they're confident, but if not, then they have to give up overtime. Yeah, and obviously not seeing any buy come out quite yet but look over on the tilted togglers like you said they do buy up but they do have the low utility they opted for the better gun less utility i think the with the way they've been shooting muck i think with the way that they've been shooting i think it makes sense that tilted togglers do go for something like a uh they do go for something you know with ak's over something else like a galil or mac 10 push yeah i yeah agreed See what we get from here. 
We're gonna see an early default towards canals with the bomb. Some early damage traded. Shroomy gets gets a little bit of chunk tanking out of him, but nothing too serious. It's like they're gonna flash themselves into his canals, but in his e box, but there's no one holding it. Chili Eater with a really great trade. That's really, really nice. I don't know if they know about Crunch towards B. Or uh, towards B main, excuse me. They threw a lot of smokes towards it to ward him off and kind of isolate this duel towards Chili Eater. I, I think this is a really good play. Crunch is going to throw some util, going to keep rotates, but Chili Eater grabbing the bomb and just leaving is, is fantastic. It, there's two players still pulled over there. Shroomy has walked up mid, so he can maybe take this comp, this, uh, you know, this, uh, he can take this contact with diabetes if he so chooses. Um, but they have isolated Chels towards A if they commit on this right now. Yeah, and Chels. Just alone on the A side, but not much. Not much else has happened with the bomb. They they just kind of stay towards canals, you know. After not being able to make much of a dent on the B side, but there is the contact coming out on A side. Shells is gonna fall back, throw the HE, push them off a little bit. They are put going up mid now into Palace, but look at Jeji. Oh, they're moving oh, they're, through cams here. I don't know if Chels knows about this. Oh, but diabetes oh. support off is there to get at least one, and Jeji is also there to help. He's gonna get a second. Lots of utility. Oh, no. He's trying to get it out. And Lavrai is going to take down Jiji as well. The 2v2 post plant's coming in. And Sage is just running onto the bomb site, and he gets it on a Chili Eater. He makes it work. I was not expecting Chili Eater the way he's been shooting to give up a kill like that, but he slips up, and Diabetes is going to actually able is going to be able to get the second one. And that's going to be an 11th for the Muck Menaces. And that force, that force is exactly what they needed to do. They, they bought back in. And, and they were able to contest, and, you know, that's one step closer to either a win or at least securing overtime. Yeah, and this Captain Diabetes op here is really pulling them forward when it he, when he needs to shine. Like, he's been getting some of these picks that they really need in order to hold these sites. Yeah, if you want to look on the side of Muck Menaces, everyone else is around 17 or 18 kills, except for Chells and Diabetes. Diabetes at 23 on that op. He's uh, really bringing his team up to his level to try to make something happen and... Oh my god! Oh my it's Lord. just a massacre from Jeji. That is insane. F quick four shots to the heads of all of the Tilted Toggler players. And uh, I think he wants the ace, but it's unfortunately not going to go his way. Atlas is going to get the fifth, but that that that's a way to stop an, uh, you know, a quick Tech 9 play. They, they put a stop sad. to it. What a star play there. Just shooting them and holding the mouse button. But you love to see it. That is some great shooting from Jeji, just one by one running into his bullets, and they just, they don't get any part of that. No, not at it's, all. It is a two-round game, Aiden, so this has become a lot closer than I thought it would, honestly. Yeah, and this is what you love to see, like, these games, nail-biters like this are the ones we love to see here on the streams. Yeah, we definitely want to keep them competitive, don't want any, you know, pretty, pretty bad stomps or anything. We want to, you know, I'm, I'm always a fan of an overtime game. It feels like every time I cast, I see an overtime game. So I'm I'm always up for it, but this is uh this is, this is really turned oh. into a close game for the Muck Menaces. Tough smoke there. I don't know if that was intentional, <laughs> but I don't think it was. I'm not sure what information they have to call this three stack towards B, but this is the perfect setup to deal with this. And I think if Lavrai is able to get did an Levi opening pick, that? oh he he I don't think he did, but he doesn't get the flick, and he's gonna toss a flash to try to get diabetes off the angle. Not quite, they're not gonna butt heads just yet. They're both very close to each other, but no activations just this second. Chili Eater is gonna try to get this smoke to smoke the left side of sight. Early utility being dropped by the Muck Menaces, and honestly, I kind of like that, that he's wasting the util. The, yes, they had people stacked over here, but they only have a couple flashes left. And that kill towards Z is going to do a lot of damage. Jeji's going to activate again. He's going to activate further, getting himself a second in this round. And oh, just the end of the mag, oh my, make oh it a third. I, I was showing up when he, when they need him most. I was just talking about how everyone on Big Slime was sitting at around 17 kills. And Jeji has gotten himself seven kills in the last two rounds. A 4k on the eco and a 3k in the gun round. This makes it a 14-13 game. I honestly thought the big slime, maybe not out of the game, but I really was not expecting Tilted Togglers to get stopped up and just slow down like this. They, they lost their momentum, and they're just walking into Jeji. I, I know uh, from talking to other people in Challenger, I know Jeji's a shooter. He just he can do it like that, and 
We're seeing that live. <laughs> He's got it like that. And, uh, yeah. This. Yeah, that bee's gonna fall out quick. Just because a little bit scary. You probably saw a lot of people with huge grenades. Another miss. And Sage is getting a little aggressive and actually only gets one. And that smoke completely shuts yeah, off their that point makes of view. It very tough. It's sure, there's shells, but. I, this is so awkward. This is very awkward. But they are just going back B main. I mean, B side is kind of open. The only one here is Atlas, and uh, Judgy is close by. So they get the first contact. He's on the right side. Gonna try to jump through. Not gonna be able to get anything done. Lafry with the picked up AK. He's gonna get one on Atlas, but Judgy, of course, he's gonna clean it up. I don't know if they know about Chili Eater, though. So this just kind of makes it awkward. I think he's sitting yeah. in the smoke hoping that they just left and he could walk on the I side think, plant. I think Judgy is cheating, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, I, uh, I'm i not like, I'm not too sure what's going on with the Tilted Togglers. I think that they're just, they were getting every opening pick under the sun. And the last few gun rounds, they've been losing it, being forced into an early 4v5. And I think that that sort of map control they're losing is killing their momentum. Yeah, it seems like they're, they're defaults and then maybe like the Lurk is getting picked off too early, which just makes it hard for them to, you know, take as much time as they would want to. Mm -hmm. It's like just another another default here as well. I like this early op post from Levry. That being said, I feel like he's defaulted towards A more than a couple times. I would, I think I would like to see him take the mid fight with his, uh, with his rifles. Kind of escort them out, try to get some map control, get doors control. Um, maybe they boost over the smokes on the bench, uh, or on the little table at top mid to see if they can get something. Because, uh, I mean, I think the CTs are peeking house, they're peeking, peeking doors, they're kind of showing themselves a little bit. I would like to see him do something yeah. a little bit more aggressive with this op. Yeah, I think they realized it was a little ambitious. Obviously, they were they were up very quick in mid, taking a little bit of peaks, but they've fallen back just a little bit. But look at uh, oh, diabetes with a quick opener. It, that's that's one that's minute in again. now, and that, that's the the other player who's not with the rest of them. Yeah, that there's no trade on that, and there's not another player here. And Levry gets flashed and actually loses the duel. He tries to get the flick, but Sage. Makes it click clean and easy. He's rotating back to mid to support Atlas, and this timing is honestly insane from him. Because he's going to walk out. He might get one here, but they're not going to be ready for, for Atlas to be close in tow. Sage actually gets it himself, and Atlas is there to help. This could be match point for the Muck Menaces. Dibes doesn't finish the job. Atlas, he's still close door and gets that kill. That leaves Shroomy in a 1v5. And I, I don't know if... I, I would like to see in a 1v5, but... Chell's Bell is on the op, not gonna let it slide. And that's match point. The the Muck Menaces, they were down thir what, 13 to 9, 13 to yeah. 10, and they've they've nine. they've made a run. It's 15-14 yeah, uh, in favor of Big Slime. The Tilted Togglers, not a lot of money to go around here. They're gonna either have to just I I, I don't know, buy light, get light guns. I mean, it's only one that this is the last round. You want the best weapons you can get, and it's not looking like there's going to be too many AKs to go around, except for on Dives. Dives, no head armor. He's opting for just the firepower, not the protection. I think something I would love to see here is a fast A play. We saw it once or twice before on uh, on their early T side with like some Ecos and stuff, and I think that's the exact play that they need to make this happen. Chels is the op towards A, so that means that Diabetes is not going to be towards M, like towards A side. He's going to be towards B. So if Chels decides to take an early uh, early op fight or they have some Heaven Smokes that come in as the flashes are raining over with an A push, I think that's exactly what you want to see with a round like this. Yeah, and really, it's only really been, been Chels on the A side for the majority of the round. Unless there had been some presence. But it's just looking like a default again towards canals though this time. It does look like we're going to see a bit of a default towards A. And I, I like that they're going to end A, but I really think they should have had some more tempo to this. With the rotates have been pulled off like this, this could be... This could be this could be it. This this could be the nail in the coffin. This could be what does it in and gets the tilted toggler's that 15th to secure overtime. We're seeing the A walkout. 
Some early shots, but not early kills. Dives. He's going to open it up on the but Captain is going to trade back with the op. Atlas gets lit up and takes lots of damage, but doesn't go down. He finally does to Chili Eater. This is a 4v3 in a post plant. And Sage, he gets one back on a Shroomy. Lots of damage. Back on to Sage. Lavrai, he activates and kills Captain Diabetes, but goes down to Sage, the hero of this round. It is a 2v2 in... Oh! Chili Eater is meaning late towards mid by Jeji, but Sage, he gets a kill on Crunch and they can send it. They, they clean it up. Muck menaces. They've had a phenomenal oh season Lord. and they're going to close their season 10 and 1. A tough and a very close loss for the Tilted Togglers. It's really hard to see that happen when they had so much momentum going into that T side. But Muck menaces, they don't they don't let it slip and they, they close out the game 16 to 14. Yeah, that was a that was a great game. Just overall, lots of and if, really interesting and fun plays to see and then there's just some crazy heroics and highlights and i mean that was just a great one and of course it was down to the last round as well yeah that is a that is a solid ending i mean i think uh i think that's going to be a good note to push challenger off into playoffs starting tomorrow officially um that's going to solidify the brackets and all of the uh all the matchups that first matchup for the night we're gonna we're gonna see what happens tomorrow with uh, with some challenger playoffs, but uh, yeah, I think that's gonna be it. And uh, yeah, uh, I, I don't know what else you wanna if you have anything you wanna add, Aiden. I think I had a fun night casting. It was a, a nice thirty round game to 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 have out tonight. So is there anything you wanted to wanted to add here? Yeah, I mean, I always have fun appearing on the cast. Obviously, I'm usually uh, observing more, but I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to tonight. So just popped in on the cast. And I had a great time, you know, I don't, don't cast that much, but yeah, I mean, that's really it from us tonight, really. Yeah, so uh, I, think, I think for me, that's, that's where I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close things out. We had Anonymous here observing for us, did a very good job, and it was a great night. Some great CS, and uh, I hope everyone enjoyed tuning in. Our A stream right now is still live. There is the first contender quarterfinal between UPS's Foe Fighters and Nan's Holy Smokes up on the A stream. So go check that out. Once we're closed down here, I hope everyone has a good rest of your night and uh, I'll see you guys. I'll see everyone later.